Hello and welcome back to Littlest Petcast. I'm your host James and today we are delving into the second bonus episode of season two. Now what this bonus episode is you might ask? Well probably not because you've read the title but people always say that so it's a habit at this point. Well (laughs) thank you for asking if you did, but today we are going to look at the shorts that premiered before season three. And yeah, yeah, like they appeared before season three, but I'm going to count them as season two content. So we're doing these for a season two bonus episode. So... Basically, right now, I'm just going to watch all of the shorts one by one and then give you my thoughts on them because they're, like, shorts. They're not even, like, five minutes or whatever. So, yeah. Like, as a heads up, I've seen some of these shorts. I don't think I've seen all of the shorts. So, I don't know. Some of this... Uh, might be familiar to me. Some of this might be new. But either way, let's go into short numero uno, Tail Ravium. So that was, that was something to start off on. <laughs> okay, so to recap what happened in the short, uh, Blythe has taken all the pets to the park, but Vinny decides to stay behind. And Blythe's like, okay, whatever. And she takes everyone else back to the park. Uh, so Vinny wanted to stay behind because he wanted to work on a dance move. But, uh, he's losing faith in himself after failing. And just like last time he lost faith in his dancing, Elzard mysteriously shows up. With his crew. And they start a dance party. To get Vinny back in the spirit of things. And it goes into a song. Which basically plays for the rest of the um, short. And you know what? It's It's a pretty good song. I like it. Um, it's, it's a rap song I think I don't know there's rapping in it like it has a beat I guess it's a rap song (laughs) about like getting this party started and it's playing from a boombox that the lizards and other assorted reptiles brought and you know they just start dancing they use a hanger to turn off the light and they set up their own lighting stuff, like Christmas lights and glow sticks. It's a heck of a time. And, like, Elzard starts showing off some of his moves and then invites Vinny to join. And Vinny gets into it and they're popping and locking and doing all sorts of things. And then uh, Vinny does his dance move that he's been working on and he lands it. However, his tail falls off. Everyone is shocked, but Vinny sees this then and isn't as shocked because this has happened before. But what is shocking is that his tail just starts dancing on his own. And then all of the other reptiles detach their tails and they start dancing. And the music gets faster. And it just goes. And like, them and their tails dancing is how the episode ends and like it's also like the flashing lights can be seen through the little pet shop window sill so <laughs> yep there's that overall i'd say it's a fine short yeah it's 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 good i like it all right so I guess that goes on to short number two. And we're talking about the ladies of LPS. All right, here we go. 
All right, so this is one I have seen, but it has been a while. And I really only saw it once, but either way, I like this short. I mean, it's it's a very light short. It's very fun. I like it. So basically, um, like Blythe is having girl time with the girl pets, and I just realized that that sounds just just a little bit weird. But you know, whatever, whatever. Like I, I'm, I'm sure Young Me and Sue would be up for it if they weren't busy sometimes and Blythe didn't have severe abandonment issues. So, yeah, I get, anyway, so they're relaxing, and they have, like, cucumbers on their eyes and stuff, and, you know, celebrating girl time, and then Minka has the idea to invite the boys, but everyone else is like, what are you talking about? And Minka says she's just a little bit bored and usually has fun with the guys. And they say they have fun with the guys too, but sometimes you just need a little bit of girl time, you know? And then they break into a song to explain it. And you know what? This is a pretty good song. It's a girl power song about what girl friendship bonds mean to everyone. And it just... I don't know, it's very beautiful and, like, very moving. Because, like, like it, it's about empowerment and it's about, like, what it means to be a girl to each pet. I, I don't... This is a weird subject for me to talk about because I have zero idea what it's like to be a girl. Because I'm not a girl. And it's not like I can't relate to girls. Or that if I were a girl I wouldn't like it. It's just... I don't know. This is more about girl to girl interactions. And I'm more of a guy. So like... I like it. It's just, you know... I like it as someone from the outside looking in. I guess. I don't know. I mean, there are probably better examples, but... I didn't start a podcast to talk about other examples. I started a podcast to talk about this show. And we're doing it. We are doing it, and you know what? I like it. Anyway. So, I don't know, the song... Is like, I don't know. It it pops from the show. It it very much fits the aesthetic of the show. A lot, and it's it's very fun and very delightful and very girly. And you know what? I can appreciate that. So, after the celebration of girliness, Minka finally gets it. And they put the cucumbers back on their eyes. And they start relaxing again. But then Pepper says that she wishes the boys were here. And thus ends the short. (laughs) Which, I mean, uh, I like it. It's it's dumb, but it's fun. Alright, so that brings us to uh, number... Three, the third short, Littlest Pet Peeves. So, for the third time in a row, this is a song. And unlike the other two, we kind of just hit the ground running. Sort of. Basically what happens is that it's raining and everyone's doing stuff. Well, almost. Well, okay. Everyone in the short is doing stuff, which... Everyone in the short is Russell, Zoe, uh, Sunil, and Minka. So Russell is trying to relax, but he can't because Zoe's chewing on a chew toy. 
And Zoe can't relax because uh, Sunil is practicing his magic. And Sunil can't relax because Minka is on the tire swing painting. So, it breaks out into song right away. And uh, everyone just starts getting up in... Well, okay, Russell, Zoe, and Sunil start getting up in everyone's grill about how you're all annoying and you really need to stop. But Minka is confused throughout this and is like, no, come on. You, you guys, like, this isn't you. You gotta be nice. But Russell, Sunil, and Zoe are being uptight and just kind of like annoyed with everything at the moment and they're just in such a dour mood they just insult each other back and forth and Mink is like I need to fix this somehow and uh, the rest of them try to leave eventually but Minka paints a picture of them being best friends and then the song turns around and it becomes about how everything they do is magic, I guess. I don't know. It's the first thing that popped into my mind. I really, man, that police song is really catchy, but this isn't anything like the police. The, the, the song in this short is more 50s doo I guess kind of closer to um like the sweet shop song but it's not exactly that style it's a bit faster and you know more more back and forth i guess but i mean it's a good song just don't know if it 100 percent fits the aesthetic but anyway uh that's where the short ends and it's a very good, fun short, and I really like it. Probably my favorite so far. All right, next we're going on to Old de Peppa. The first non-musical short of this series of shorts. Uh, it is about the pets uh, getting all dressed up for the International Pet Expo, Pet Fashion Expo, excuse me, so guess I was right to include these into season two. Anyway, so um, they're all dressed up, and Blythe says they look good. Pepper asks if they smell good, and then logics her way into trying to get a smell by basically saying a smell travels to the judges, and it subconsciously makes them happier, and more likely that they will give the award to Blythe. So she and Penny Ling go off into a fantasy, essentially, where they're in a creepy castle, and Penny is experimenting on Pepper to to get the best, most happiest scent, which is, like, a uh, peppermint something cupcake. And, uh, like, to do that, Pepper's got to be really happy, so she got to see happy things, and that's where Penny Ling comes in. So Penny Ling is in charge of showing Pepper images that are supposed to make Pepper happy. So the first thing that she shows Pepper is a rubber chicken and that produces a vanilla scent and I really love this joke this really hint of a joke that like rubber chicken is plain vanilla essentially it's it's good but it's everywhere and that's that's what vanilla is and some might even say it's the finest of the flavors and we're back on Penny Ling's stunt okay Anyway, uh, it evolves, and uh, the next image is, uh, I forgot what the next image was, but it produces, like, a blueberry with uh, jasmine. Uh, 
and then uh, it keeps going and going and going in the montage. And we see things like old bananas, shattering teeth, a punching bag blocks, blithe, etc., etc. And through this, we see Pepper getting exhausted. And eventually, the room fogs up with all of Pepper's pleasant scents. And Pennyling asks to stop, but Pepper's like, no, gotta get it. And so Penny does some elaborate lever pulling, and we see an image of none other than Capitan Cuddles. And that makes Pepper a little less exhausted, makes her heart her eyes grow hearts. And produces her signature peppermint scent. However, before Penny Ling can uh, catch it, uh, like she slips on a different test tube that was there, and the smell lets go. So back in reality land, Blythe says that this is a real pleasant scent, Pepper. And uh, Pepper asks Penny if she got it, and Penny says no. And then Blythe says, mm, you can just try again. And they faint, but, I mean, you know what does it. And it's not like, it's not like Pepper's enthusiasm for Captain Cuddles is about to go down anytime soon. I mean, for goodness sake, she spent the entirety of an episode obsessing over him. The entire... It's not gonna... It's not gonna fade out like 10 minutes later. I mean, I guess you could escalate it more, but... Eh, whatever. Overall, this is a really funny, really interesting short. And it's... I just like it a lot. So, short number five is where did the S car go? Is, is there a French word for happy and weirded out at the same time? Because I don't know what I just went through, but it's not the worst. So, as you can tell, we're, we're in Paris, and Penny and Vinny are at a restaurant? We're going to get into this a little later. Anyway, so uh, they're looking at the menu, and Vinny's a bit upset because they have None of his favorite French food. No French fries, no French toast, no French dip. Where is it? And the waiter can talk to them. And the waiter's like, uh... So, something I just remembered quick was that, like, Vinny asked, this is France. And the waiter said, oui. And then Vinny says, ah, I don't have to, but thanks for asking. Ugh. Anyway, so the waiter's annoyed, and uh, Penny Ling salvages it, though, by, like, asking what they would recommend. And uh, the waiter recommends the daily special, and they order it. So the waiter goes and gets it. And then Penny brings up about how romantic Paris is. Are they on a, like, date? Actually, like, is this a definitive thing here? I don't know. It's weird. So Penny points out uh, the Eiffel Tower and how it was erected in 1889 for the World Festival and points out the Louvre and, like, how it has the Mona Lisa. And then Vinny points to something only to see that it's a mine, but it's not... Uh, man, I forgot the, uh, dog's name. Philippe. It's not Philippe, it's a human mime. Anyway, 
they're a bit disinterested in that. And then uh, the waiter comes back and Vinny says, like, garçon, but garçon, it, he pronounces it incorrectly. That's the gist of it. So, whatever. The thing is there, and, you know, he takes it off, and it's snails, and they say hi, or bonjour, if you will. And, yeah, this is where Vinny says garcione, something like that. I don't know. And says that these snails ate their food. But then the waiter informs them that the snails are the food. And that it's escargot. And Penny and Vinny freak out. Because everyone's eating them snails. And they don't want them to eat the snails. So they go around knocking the trays out of the hands. And tipping over the snail place like this. Uh, oh God. Um, there, there's this little glass box full of snails, like they're lobsters at Red Lobster, and it's just, it's just hilarious. <laughs> so they tip that over, and they tell everyone to run, but they're snails, so they realize they can't save them fast enough, so they stick them to themselves, and then run them off. <laughs> And then it turns out this is a fantasy and that they were in the snail enclosure. And Blythe says, probably should not have left them in the snail enclosure. And she's sitting with Russell and Russell uh, gets hit with the snail and that ends the thing, which... Yeah, yeah, this this one's a bit weird. Like... Like, are are Penny and Vinny on a date? Is, like, Penny fully interested in that? Like, is, like, the the snails... I don't... I don't get it. It's not bad. I I enjoyed it. But, like, holy moly. It was weird. Like, like, because, like... Russell and Blythe are there and like two at the end and is it like a whole like jealousy thing or is she really interested? It's I'm I'm back on this stuff again. I don't it's 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 I mean to be fair the last short ended with the big shipping thing but I'm a little more okay with that because it's a bit more definitive than this will they won't they stuff that I'm sort of making up. It's dumb. So, uh, the next short is called Life of Cake. So, so for this short, you start in a lifeboat (laughs) and Sunil has been stranded on this lifeboat. And so he's writing a letter begging for food. He then puts it in a bottle and sends the message out. And I can't believe the police came up twice in two different unrelated things. And don't tell me that I brought it up myself. You, you, like, like when I say message in a bottle, like the police is one of the first things you think of. It, it's bound to show up, okay? So he throws it out, and a shark eats it. And if you couldn't tell, this is based off of uh, Life of Pi, which is a book that got turned into a movie about a kid on a lifeboat with a tiger on it. So uh, Sunil wonders what he's going to do, but then he realizes he's a magician and he can make food appear. And he makes a pistachio upside down cake and he goes to eat it. But Steve comes up and says, it's also his favorite. And, uh, they decide to fight over it. And it goes into a DBZ esque fight sequence between mongoose and Cobra 
as they jump in the air and like trade blows with each other and then they land and Steve tries to get the cake but Sunil also goes for it and like they're dragging it back and forth until it uh, flies out of both of their grasps and lands in the uh, water where the shark gets it and uh, like Sunil goes to save the cake from the shark by going into the shark and getting it out and he's like uh, I'll save you cake but then Blythe asks Sunil to not squirm as much and in reality this was just Sunil having a bath and we see like the cake the boat and the cobra you know as like squeaky toys for the bath and Sunil embarrasses like <laughs> and then asks Blythe if she wants cake and then the kicker the kicker is Blythe says no I prefer pie and that ends it and ugh. oh man like I like this one it's it's a weird reference for sure but I don't know, Life of Pi is a young adult thing. Okay, so I looked it up, and the tiger's name is Richard Parker. Like, I've only really read part of the book once back in, like, middle school, I think. So, it's been a bit. It's been a bit, and I, I'm not really familiar. So, yeah, the tiger's name is Richard Parker, and that's one of the summoning words that summons Sunil's cake. So... You, I mean, g good for you. Good for you. Uh, Julie McNally Cahill and Tim Cahill. You know, I will I will support you. So, yeah, they, they wrote all of the shorts, and you'll see that in the show notes, but that, that deserves its own shout-out. But as I was saying, the short is still fun, even even though it's a big reference. And hey, weird references are part of the show, so can't complain. Anyway, uh, it's it's just really good and it's really fun and entertaining. And I don't know, it's it's really good. I like it. Anyway, the next short is the fire hydrant song. So this one's fun, I guess. I don't know, it's it's really hard to describe. So this is this is another song one. But before we get into the song, Blythe is preparing an outfit for Zoe for the pet fashion expo, which has come up twice in these shorts. Anyway, Zoe's in the fire hydrant and uh Blythe asks why, and Zoe says she's having a crisis of fabulousness. And Blythe thinks that it's not possible because Zoe's probably the most fabulous one of them all. So Blythe gives the advice of just think fabulous and it'll come to you. And Zoe likes the sound of that and it goes into the song. And uh, it's a very fun song. It's about how Zoe bolsters her self-confidence by saying she's fabulous not unlike uh that one song from Phineas and Ferb about Bobby fabulous but it's a bit different it's more Zoe's style instead of Bobby's style and you know what you know what two people can have different styles and it works and they rock it and the whole song is about rocking a fabulous style. And Zoe drags everyone else into it, except Blythe. Blythe has to chase her around in the fantasy song or whatever as she makes everything fabulous, including one of Blythe's old Fashion University North classmates, who wasn't fabulous, but then when Zoe fabulized, fabulized him, I guess is the word, uh, yeah, I guess he goes back to wearing his fun outfit. So was the reason he attended fun to 
help him better express himself? And, like, his parents found him designing fashion even though they were trying to get him to do sports for, like, ten years and he just wasn't into it. I like this headcanon I'm forming now. Anyway, so there's that. And also, I do want to point out one of the lyrics is U is for Unitard because she's spelling out fabulous. She does that twice, but with different stuff. And the U is for Unitard one, like, jumps out at me because I don't associate Unitards with being fabulous, but that's kind of Zoe's brand of fabulousness is to just, like, go with it. And it's something I try to do sometimes when, like, you know, I don't feel confident in something. Something that bolsters my confidence is not to apologize for it or to, like, just go through with it. Bear in mind, if it needs an apology, I will absolutely apologize. But if it's, like, I was, like, a day or two late with homework, I'm not going to apologize. Or if I didn't do one of the requirements, I'm not going to apologize. Because... Uh, that draws attention to it and like you just gotta plow through and that's exactly what Zoe does with this song and she becomes fabulous again <laughs> and she gets her fabulousness back and so uh, she asks for an outfit and she dons it and rocks it and that is the end of the short so next Short, short number eight in this 10 part epic of shorts is Nap Time's A Ball. Well, that certainly was interesting. So it begins with uh, all the pets asleep and snoring, but Russell can't sleep because of the snoring. So he goes out of the play area to get some peace and quiet, but just then, uh, like, a boy, a dog, and a woman come in. And Russell balls up when the dog approaches, but the dog just picks it up thinking it's a ball. And the woman buys the ball. And Mrs. John Lee says, Great choice. These spiky balls are all the rage. <laughs> so after they get out, Russell escapes, but then gets sucked up by the street cleaners. And gets tossed about into the sewers where he rolls around for a bit and gets dropped off into the dang ocean where he is then eaten by a fish and then caught and then he balls up again. And so that makes him makes the fisher thinks that it's another sea urchin. So they boat across the Atlantic to the coast of France, I believe. And then, uh, like, uh, he's placed in the back of an aquarium truck with all the other sea urchins. But then the truck hits a pothole and he gets jettisoned out and he lands in a pile of bags that are being transported with the airport. And so, uh... So he he flies on a plane, and then when luggage comes back, uh, he gets off the suitcase he was on, and he gets into a bag, and the bag's in a cab with a person that we don't see, but I recognize this character. And it turns out when they arrive from their taxi to the place where they were going, it's the littlest pet shop because it's Roger, and he went to see Blythe, and Russell goes in, says, oh, happy day, and then goes in, but then he proceeds to wake everyone up, and everyone berates him for it, and he's like, ugh, and falls over. So that's, uh, that's what that is. I'd say it's fun. It's an interesting one, for sure. It's, uh, it's a ball, you would say. Anyway, uh, the next short, the second to last short, is just not into it. Okay, this one was delightful. I love it. I love it. Anyway, so what happens in this short 
is Vinny, Russell, and Sunil are playing a game where uh, they're trying to keep a balloon in the air. And, you know, I can't deny it's a fun game whenever you get a chance to play it. So, whatever. Anyway, Blythe comes in and asks them to try on some outfits for the Pet Fashion Expo. And that's the third time this has come up, but... Uh, they say, not really, that we're playing this really important game. And besides, we're not really that into fashion and stuff. And then uh, it goes into a song, the last song of the shorts. Of these shorts, anyway. And, uh, like, it's a song about them saying that they don't care about clothes. But then they're also complimenting the clothes that they're putting on and like how well they look and you know it it gets really fu- it's just it's just funny like I love I love this humor so like some of the outfits are like Sunil looks like a beetle like a classic beetle not like like a later beetle when you can actually tell them apart but like a classic beetle. Uh, I mean, they have some outfits from the show, obviously. Uh, but there's some other outfits. Like that beetle outfit. I think I think that's the only one that's new. Or maybe Russell's, like, fashion-y outfit. You, you would know it if you see it. It's really hard to describe. There's just, like, big pink glasses or whatever. And, like, throughout the song, they're also hitting up the balloon. And, like, it's just, it's just, this is a really fun song. And it's really well done, and it's stylized to to the show perfectly. And, like, Blythe looks on as, like, yeah, you know, I get it. And, like, she's rolling her eyes. And... You know, they keep putting on clothes and complimenting each other and stuff. It's really funny. I just love it. So, like, the song ends. And, like, the balloon lands on uh, one of Russell's articles of clothing. Like, the hat he was wearing at the photo shoot. And it pops. And they're a little disappointed. But Blythe offers them more clothes to try on. And they're like, sure. And then Blythe gives us a wink to end it. Oh, this one's really fun. I think this might be my favorite. Uh, Anyway, for the last short, we have Monkey Chase. Oh, this one was also super delightful. So in this one, uh, Minka is getting her paints ready, and she's making a giant painting for Blythe's kiosk for the Pet Fashion Expo. Which, I mean, I guess covers all of the characters and what they're doing for preparation at this point. Which, you know what? I, I will admit, it's a really fun detail. And that makes these shorts more than just shorts. And it, it gives it some kind of structure of continuity, I guess. Anyway, so Minka begins painting. And so she splatters some green onto the thing and it then turns into a tree and then she does so with uh, more paint and it turns into an actual jungle and she makes a monkey and the monkey comes to life and uh, like Mink is excited because she has a new friend but the monkey is only interested in one thing Minka's banana so he goes and grabs it And then Minka gives chase with some of her paints. And so she tracks down this monkey and starts using uh, the paints to create stuff to try and slow him down. But uh, he gets around it. So, like, they make a mountain, but they climb it. They make a tree brush, so they get into it. Then she makes a lion. But the monkey goes around it, and so does Minka. And then they make an elephant, but the elephant is red. And I, ugh, that is such a detail that I didn't think 
would happen. So for those of you outside the U.S., you might not know a red elephant is the color and animal of the Republican Party. And whatever you feel about the Republican Party at this point, that's a, that's, that's a good detail and I like it. Although they did not include a blue donkey, so I'm a little confused, but I guess a donkey isn't really a jungle animal. But we'll get into <laughs> something else. So she also makes a blue Steve the Cobra and a blue shark. And I mean, I guess a shark, like the shark was an accident though. Like, like, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's weird, but you know, no, no, never mind. We're, we're, yeah, donkey, specifically not a forest animal or jungle animal or whatever. So they go in and uh, they, like Minka eventually creates like a like petal box thing and the other monkey starts dancing to it and he gets a little fuzz from Minka and they start dancing as well. But as Minka catches up with them, he runs off and the music box guy is also covered in paint. And eventually it gets so out of control that Minka eventually makes a red, yellow, and blue T-Rex. And it chases her. And uh, uh, she lands, like, out of breath, exhausted. And the other monkey can see that. And so offers her most of her banana. But he does take a bit of it. So he's sharing. And Minka's like, yeah... But then, back in reality, uh, all of the other pets are mad at Minka because Minka was just throwing her paints around and it all landed at all corners of the pet shop. And Minka offers a banana as an apology, but, you know, it's it's too little, too late. Uh, oh, God, I... I think this one's my favorite just because of like the creativity and all of the delightful bits and just like the, the paint thing. It's just super fun. Oh my goodness is super fun. Uh, I love, I love this one. All right. So now that we've done all of them, I think I can you know what? I'll rank them. So Monkey Chase is definitely my favorite. Then Just Not Into It. Then Littlest Pet Peeves. Then uh, I'm going to say Ladies of LPS, Fire Hydrant Song, uh, Life of Cake, Ode de Pepper, uh, Telravium, uh... And nap time's a ball, and then where'd the S car go? I think that's all of them. I have a list, but it's not in order where I can reorganize it. Anyway. But, you know, overall, though, I'd say the shorts are good. The shorts are really fun and interesting. And, you know, they're, they're on YouTube for free. You could easily pop them on and have a good time for... A lot less longer than it takes for me to describe these. But that's the fun of this. It's me going more in depth onto things. But all good things must come to an end. And so this episode shall come to an end now. So that will do it for bonus two of season two of the Littlest Pet Cast, be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine, on Apple Podcasts, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go when uh, a bunch of paint like makes things into a reality. And be sure to tune in for more bonus content. I will see you then.
Also, I may have gotten a tip on someone who might be watching. So, if you go on the Smashboards under the username Goth Fluttershy, someone there saw you who knows me and knows I'm doing this podcast. In fact, it was the absent third from the second round of the name game and the not absent third in the first round. Although I don't know what their username on there is. But if you are goth Fluttershy, please message me on Twitter at VGC Kenny or, you know, um, comment or something. I would like to hear what you have to say. That is all.